The Grand Canyon is full of secrets. From forgotten civilizations to secret government bunkers to even murders, here are some of the most incredible discoveries from the most famous canyon in the world. The Lost Cities of the Canyon When you stand at the edge of the Grand Canyon and look out across the vast landscape, it feels like you're standing on an alien planet. It doesn't really look like a place where anybody would live. Yet the Grand Canyon is covered in the ruins of lost cities and forgotten civilizations. The truth is that humans have continuously occupied the Grand Canyon for the last 4,000 years. But people have also been living in the Grand Canyon on and off for at least 12,000 years. What's even more shocking, though, is that hardly any of the Grand Canyon has been properly explored. According to the National Park Service, only 3% of the Grand Canyon has been intensively surveyed. And just within that 3%, are 4,800 archaeological sites. Stay with those numbers for a second. Almost 5,000 archaeological sites have been identified in less than 5% of the Grand Canyon. There could be things hidden within the canyon that change human history. If you want to run with the numbers, you'd need to multiply 4,800 by 97, and the math clearly shows that there could be as many as 465,000 hundred archaeological sites spread across the park. But who exactly lived in the Grand Canyon? The most ancient group is known as the Ancestral Puebloans. Anthropologists believe that the first people who lived in the Grand Canyon were the ancestors of modern tribes such as the Hopi and the Zuni. One of the most important settlements of the canyon is Tusayan. It was developed around the year 1185. Archaeologists have uncovered fields for crops, religious temples, and communal structures. There was a grand plaza in the center of the settlement, and people had storage rooms for food in their single-story dwellings. Sadly, though, no written record of the lost civilization has ever been found. There's no indication of what they believed or where they came from. It's also unclear what happened to the people of Tusayan or the rest of the canyon. Around the 14th century, almost all of the people living in the Grand Canyon suddenly left, never to return. And their sudden departure is still a mystery to this day. And now for a quick break because it's shout out time! I want to give a big thank you to Cabbage Animations and Grand Crowd Dad Ford for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries, or dinosaurs, or crazy things found in the Grand Canyon. We've got it all! JFK's Secret Lair One of the creepiest hotel rooms in the world is hidden within the Grand Canyon. Back in 1961, President John F. Kennedy created a safe space for 2,000 VIPs within the Grand Canyon caverns. The creepy hotel room is an enormous subterranean lair that was supposed to protect government officials in the case of a nuclear disaster, and it's still there today. In 1961, the Cuban Missile Crisis loomed in the mind of every American. It was a very real possibility that nukes could be exchanged between America and Russia. So the president had a special cavern made. Food and supplies were transported into the caves, enough stuff to support 2,000 people for a month. The bombs never fell, though, so now the site serves as a tourist spot. You can take refuge in the cave without having to worry about getting hit by a bomb. 220 feet below ground is a single room, not far from where JFK's emergency rations are still stored. It's maintained by the Grand Canyon Caverns Motel, which is mostly above ground. The only room for rent underground is this single, unnerving cavern. It has a small library, running water, and a surprisingly peaceful atmosphere. For around $1,000 a night, you can experience what life would be like if everybody lived in luxury cave bunkers. The Lost Rocks Scientists realized that something was missing from the Grand Canyon 150 years ago. One billion years' worth of rocks were unaccounted for, and nobody knew where they went. But what do I mean by one billion years' worth of rocks being missing? Think of the Grand Canyon as a history book. Each layer of rock is like a page in the book, allowing scientists to peek into the planet's past. When you look through the canyon, you can see the individual layers from various geological periods. 
All those bright colors are different pages in time. If you go to the very bottom, you're looking at the world as it was two billion years ago. But the history book is missing a huge number of pages. There is a gap where one billion years of geological history simply doesn't exist. This conundrum is known as the Great Unconformity. It was first described in 1869 by scientist John Wesley Powell. He was the first one to notice that there are rocks that are 520 million years old sitting directly on top of rocks that are 1.4 billion years old. And that means that the entire layer in between is gone. Scientists have been struggling to make sense of this mystery ever since, but a new group of researchers may have just cracked the case. Geologist Bara Peak from the University of Colorado recently completed a study of the Grand Canyon. Bara and the team believe that the missing rocks were washed away when the ancient supercontinent Rodinia was destroyed 700 million years ago. Peak believes that Rodinia's destruction was so violent that it completely obliterated one billion years worth of natural stone. The Cheetah Fight A cave inside the Grand Canyon was the stage for an epic battle 20,000 years ago. Two fearsome American cheetahs faced off against one another in a fight to the death. This was a truly bloody example of nature at its meanest. The two American cheetahs fought with tooth and claw until one of them was bitten through its spine. The loser of the fight dropped to the floor of the cave, down for the count, and it likely died where it fell. As it decayed, it left behind bits of mummified tissue and some fragments of bone. The victor of the fight is lost to history. The surviving big cat left the cave and went about its feline business, but the defeated cheetah found its final resting place within that cave, allowing researchers to study it years later. In truth, the fossils of the dead cheetah were uncovered decades ago, but the scientists who found them assumed that they were bones from a mountain lion. It was only when scientists took a fresh look at them recently that the bones were identified as belonging to an American cheetah. American cheetahs were very similar to modern snow leopards. They prowled the cliffs and rocky crags of the Grand Canyon during the Ice Age. They feasted on mountain goats and bighorn sheep. But just like the other formidable predators and humongous mammals of the Ice Age, they went extinct about 10,000 years ago. Scientists were even able to recreate the fight between the cheetahs after meticulously studying the fossilized bones of the defeated animal. Paleontologist Jean-Paul Hodnett identified puncture wounds on the skull and spine that came from an American cheetah's teeth. Recreating the fossils allowed him to recreate the epic cat fight. According to Jean-Paul, it could have been a territorial battle. He said that it may have also been an adult male cheetah trying to kill a rival teenage cheetah, something that big cats still do today. Uranium at the Museum There was a radiation cover-up that just happened in the Grand Canyon. Three buckets of uranium ore were found to have been sitting inside a museum for years. So, how many visitors to the museum, not to mention staff members, were exposed to dangerous uranium? The shocking revelation was announced in 2019, and it turned out that for almost 20 years, tourists and employees at the National Park Service's Grand Canyon Museum collection were exposed to three buckets of pure uranium ore. They were sitting next to a taxidermy exhibit, and nobody even realized it. The five-gallon containers were initially uncovered in 2018 by a tourist wielding a geyser counter. Then the buckets were probably removed into a hallway before being dumped into an old uranium mine. What followed was blanket silence. It was only when a rogue email was sent to all the employees of the Park Service that the news went mainstream. Somebody had blown the whistle on the whole operation. Park safety officials were forced to make an announcement that anyone who visited the museum building between 2000 and 2018 was potentially exposed to radioactive uranium. The uranium surpassed the accepted safe limits set by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. People who visited the museum likely aren't going to grow tentacles out of their backs or an eyeball in the back of their head, but it was still quite a fiasco. What a lot of people don't realize is that the Grand Canyon is full of uranium. There are abandoned mine shafts across the entire region. 
Also, there are active uranium mines just a stone's throw away from the most popular tourist spots in the park. Blind Pseudoscorpions Pseudoscorpions are extremely unusual creatures. They look like a creepy mix between a scorpion and a termite. They aren't particularly dangerous, but you likely wouldn't want a bunch of them crawling around on your feet. The next time you visit the Grand Canyon, be aware that scientists just found two entirely new species of these creepy crawlies in a dark cave. The discovery was made on the northern rim of the Grand Canyon. Mark Harvey with the Western Australian Museum was involved in the discovery. Mark and his colleagues identify the tiny arachnids in a deep section of cavern, and the creatures are remarkable for a few reasons. For starters, they have no eyeballs. These pseudoscorpions are completely blind. They also have sharp pincers, scrawny legs, and no stinger tail. They use their pincers to catch moth larvae, mites, and lice. In that way, they are helpful to humans. They get rid of things we don't like very much. But as scary as the pictures make them out to be, pseudoscorpions are really small. You have a very low chance of ever seeing one because they are hardly bigger than your thumb's fingernail. Death in the Canyon if you had to guess, how many people would you say die every year in the Grand Canyon? Maybe one or two, right? It's not like the Grand Canyon is a realm of death and despair. Or would you guess over 10? I'm going to give you a figure right now that will blow your mind. Since death started being recorded in the 1800s, 900 people have officially perished in the Grand Canyon. And that doesn't count all of the random skeletons that have been discovered at the bottom of the canyon. The natural wonder that is the Grand Canyon spans an astounding 270 miles. It's also 8 miles wide in some places. Then there's all the rugged terrain surrounding the deep fissures in the earth. It's so big and such a treacherous place that people are constantly dying from a variety of causes. But the biggest killers here are dehydration, tall cliffs that people can easily fall over, and helicopter crashes. Every year, an average of 12 people die in the Grand Canyon. It sounds extreme, but keep in mind that there are roughly 5 million visitors every year. The odds of falling off the rim are about 1 in 1.8 million. But just because the odds are slim doesn't mean you should let your guard down while visiting this natural marvel. The leading cause of death is airplane and helicopter crashes. 379 people have died from aerial disasters in the Grand Canyon, while 198 people have fallen to their deaths. 124 have died from environmental causes. That means that they either starved, dehydrated, or were struck by lightning. 100 people have drowned in the Colorado River that winds through the gorge. Then there's the most shocking statistic of all. A total of 39 people have been murdered in cold blood in the Grand Canyon. The Underground Complex An underground complex was discovered inside the Grand Canyon by a group of hikers in July of 2020. You won't find mention of this discovery on any reputable news sites. It's impossible to confirm, with the reports not offering any legitimate proof. But here's the story anyway, just for fun. Peter Marlington was exploring a virtually untouched part of the Grand Canyon with some friends. They stopped in a wooded area beside the cliff to take a break. But after pushing their way through some shrubbery, they came to a gaping hole in the wall. It wasn't a natural cave, but a tunnel lined with brick. It was super creepy, dark, and narrow. A musty smell also seemed to be wafting out of it. Although they were nervous, the hikers pulled out some flashlights and went to explore the tunnel. The tunnel seemed to go on forever. The hikers continued exploring its passages until it became too creepy to continue. Peter claimed that it felt as if they were being watched. They found broken walls and an immense chamber with a collapsed floor, and even more passages underneath. Peter thinks the place has been abandoned for at least 400 years. Peter told the park rangers what he and his friends had found, but they had no idea what Peter was talking about. And since then, there have been no other reports of anyone finding this strange underground complex. Fossilized Footprints Paleontologists were overjoyed when a cliff at the Grand Canyon collapsed, revealing a series of footprints from 313 million years ago. 
A fragment of wall tumbled to the ground, and right there, clear as day, were tracks left behind by a prehistoric monster. Making discoveries like this can sometimes prove difficult, but other times they fall right into the laps of researchers. The amazing discovery was made in 2016. A geology professor by the name of Alan Krill was hiking through the National Park with his students when he came across the boulder. He recognized the imprints in the stone as animal tracks right away, but he couldn't have imagined how old they were. These are now the oldest recorded tracks of their kind found in the Grand Canyon. So, what creature left behind these ancient footprints? They appear to be from two separate animals, though scientists don't know exactly what animals. They were likely tetrapods, slow-moving creatures that walked similarly to modern cats and dogs. Chances are that they were walking across sand dunes when their footprints were immortalized. It's amazing to think that tracks in the sand could remain locked in the earth for so long, millions of years before dinosaurs even evolved. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Noah's Ark Noah's Ark may have just been discovered in the Turkish mountains. Three-dimensional scans conducted by biblical archaeologists using ground-penetrating radar have revealed the exact shape of a giant boat buried underneath a mountain. Even more amazing is that this location is the same place where the Ark is said to have stopped after the flood in the book of Genesis. The discovery fits perfectly with what's written in the Bible. But of course, nobody has actually started digging to see if there is a boat under the mountain. This could very well just be a geological formation. It could just be the way Mount Tenderek looks. But according to Andrew Jones, longtime ark hunter who was involved with the study, this is almost definitely Noah's great ship. He says the result of their survey shows a man-made object underneath heaps of debris, likely caused by a mud flow. In other words, the Ark landed here before being buried by a giant landslide. We just won't know the truth until archaeologists get permission to go down there and start digging. Alien Abduction in the Mountains In September of 1961, a Canadian couple named Betty and Barney Hill were on their way to Portsmouth from Montreal. They were going on their honeymoon vacation. But as they drove through the mysterious White Mountains in New Hampshire, they experienced what they described as an alien abduction. This is one of the stranger cases of alien abductions that we know about. They were both respected members of society. Betty was a social worker and Barney was a postal worker. In other words, they supposedly weren't crazy. And yet they both had the same story about what happened in the mountains that day. They first saw light in the sky that appeared to be following them. Eventually, the light was following so close that the couple pulled over to see what was going on. They took out a pair of binoculars to try and get a better look and they were shocked to see that they were being followed by some kind of flying saucer. They quickly got back in the car and tried to drive away, and that was when the object came in closer and hovered right above their car. Betty and Barney described it as being the size of a jet, except flat as a pancake. It was around this point where both of them lost consciousness. They woke up the next morning in their vacation house in Portsmouth with no recollection of how they got there. This became one of the biggest and most mysterious alien abductions in U.S. history. There is even a plaque detailing their story in the White Mountains. So, if you're driving through here at night, be aware of the danger. Primitive Lovers A pair of cavemen lovers were just discovered by Italian authorities way up in the mountains. It all started when rumors began to circulate in the small town of Moggio Udinese, that there was a couple living in seclusion up on the mountain overlooking the town. The local police climbed up the mountain to flush the couple out. After all, you can't just live for free off the land, not in this day and age. What the authorities discovered was a man in his 50s and his girlfriend, half his age, with nothing except a pair of sleeping bags and a circular stone fireplace that they had dug in the dirt. According to the head forest ranger, the couple went wild six months before, and had literally been living under a rock. At first, the couple did not want to come down from the mountain. They said it was their right to live in the wilderness if they wanted to, but they eventually conceded and allowed the rescue team to bring them down to rejoin civilization. And believe it or not, the woman had actually given birth to a baby girl inside an alpine hut just before they went wild. She handed the baby over to a family member and then ran off into the woods with her boyfriend. He told her that he would build a forest cabin for them to live in, but they ended up just hiding under a rock instead. 
The couple has since been released to do whatever they please by the authorities. As of now, I have no idea if they went back up into the mountains or called it quits and went home. Skeleton Lake There is a secret lake high up in the Himalayan mountains with a dark and sordid history. It's called Rupkund Lake, located 16,500 feet above sea level. It's at the bottom of the Trisul Mountain, one of the highest in all of India. Back in 1942, a patrolling group of British forest rangers uncovered the lake, along with hundreds of skeletons scattered around its shores. It's hard to say exactly how many skeletons have been left here. The lake expands and shrinks each year because of the frigid temperatures. The skeletons are only visible in the summer when the snow melts. Years ago, the rangers found skeletons with flesh still attached to their bones, looking like they hadn't been dead for very long. Since then, somewhere around 800 dead bodies have been found scattered around the lake. But ever since the initial discovery, scientists have been struggling to figure out how they got there. To this day, scientists still don't have all the answers, but they do have a lot of theories. One theory says that about 870 years ago, a large group of people were moving through the area when they got trapped in a blizzard. All of them starved and died, slowly decaying along the edges of the lake. Another theory says that the remains are from Indian soldiers who tried to invade Tibet back in 1841, but failed, and then died trying to find their way back home over the Himalayas. Since many of the skeletons have holes in their head, some researchers argue that people were caught in a hailstorm that was so bad, it literally pummeled them to death. Another theory based on carbon dating of the remains, which found that the bodies were left at the lake over a period of 1,000 years, means there was no single event at all, but something that happened over the course of many years. Perhaps the lake was actually used as some kind of ritual area, where people were taken and sacrificed for unknown reasons. What theory do you believe? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe for more videos like these. Ancient Mountain Castle High up in the mountains of Turkey, archaeologists have found the ruins of a kingdom that's been lost to history for almost 3,000 years. They unearthed a castle that has been directly linked to the Urartu civilization. The Urartu once dominated much of modern Armenia, parts of Turkey, and parts of Iran, and they actually warred with the kingdom of Assyria back in the first millennium BC. The castle itself had gone undetected throughout all of modern history. It was only just now that it was uncovered 8,200 feet above sea level, hidden by Turkey's remote mountain peaks. It was students from the Van Yuzunku Yil University who excavated its foundations, confirming it to be 2,800 years old. But researchers say it was mostly used during the Middle Ages, 2,000 years after it was built, and here is why. The Urartu emerged as a civilization in the 13th century BC. They were a big political force in the Middle East, but lost control because of the neighboring Assyrians. Too much war saw them crumble, and by the 7th century BC, they had all but been eradicated. They vanished into thin air, leaving very little behind. This castle is one of the only buildings ever discovered that belonged to the Urartu, and because the castle had gone unused for so long, people simply moved in during the Middle Ages and used it as their own. Recent Bones Near a hiking trail in the Pyrenees Mountains, very close to the border between France and Spain, a couple of hikers discovered a skeleton. These hikers were simply exploring the mountain when they came across a skeleton so fresh that it still had hair on its scalp. The hikers immediately alerted the Spanish police, who launched an investigation. Along with the human skeleton, authorities discovered a small collection of animal remains. This brought them to the realization that the person had probably been dragged to this remote part of the mountain by a wild animal. They now believe the skeleton could belong to a woman named Esther Dingley, who went missing while hiking back in November. It was November 22nd when she sent her very last text message to friends, saying that she had driven to the Spanish side of the mountains and that she was going to go hiking. But this was at the beginning of France going into lockdown over the coronavirus, preventing a thorough search of the area. Authorities with both France and Spain did basic search and rescue attempts, but presumed Dingley was already dead. Since she has never been found, the experts are pretty certain that the human skeleton belongs to her. But as for how she died, that's still something of a mystery. She may have perished, lost, and hungry and confused, then had her corpse ravaged by wild animals. The Tuxtla Statuette It was 1902 when an indigenous man was plowing his field in the Tuxtla Mountains of Mexico in the state of Veracruz. While doing this, 
he came across a mysterious green stone about the size of a mango. It turned out to be a piece of jadeite, an artifact over 1,800 years old. A picture of a human figure with bird wings and a beak for a mouth was carved into it. It was also inscribed with a bizarre set of hieroglyphics. By 1903, the Tushla statuette had made it to the Smithsonian Institute in the United States. At first, researchers thought they were dealing with a relic from the Mayan civilization. But when the hieroglyphics were compared to the Mayan characters available at the time, there was no likeness between them. By 1907, it was clear that nobody had any idea who crafted this mysterious statue. It wasn't until 1960 that scholars put forth the idea that it was made by the Olmec civilization, a group of people who came 1,000 years before the Maya. Finally, in 1993, a pair of linguistics experts named John Justison and Terence Kaufman deciphered the hieroglyphics written on the stone. The translation revealed that the statue came from the year 162, at the height of the Olmec society. But to this very day, other scientists dispute the claim, saying that because almost no other examples of the Olmec script exist, these people wouldn't have had any real way to decipher the hieroglyphics. It's still up in the air whether this mysterious mountain artifact was made by the Olmec, and what its exact purpose was almost 2,000 years ago. Ancient Human Dwellings In Ethiopia's Baal Mountains, over 11,000 feet above sea level, archaeologists have uncovered ancient human dwellings. The team of experts found artifacts like stone tools and burned animal bones, as well as other evidence indicating that human beings were living way up in these remote mountains 47,000 years ago. According to the Smithsonian, this represents the earliest evidence of prehistoric human beings living at this high of an altitude. One of the reasons this is so amazing is that ever since archaeology has been around, people have mostly concentrated on areas nearer to sea level. Archaeologists never really considered that ancient people were building their houses way up in the mountains. Now we know better. In the Bale Mountains, researchers found at least 300 rock shelters once occupied by primitive humans. Even more shocking is the fact that these rock shelters were inhabited from between 47,000 and 31,000 years ago. It's honestly hard to comprehend that amount of time. Humans were sheltering in crude rock houses for a full 16,000 years. To put that into perspective, smartphones have only been popular for about 15 years. Microscopic Fossils A new study led by geologist Reed Shearer from Northern Illinois University has found that the East Antarctic ice sheet could collapse in the near future because of climate change, causing massive flooding across the globe. He made this discovery thanks to microscopic ocean fossils. But these fossils weren't found in the ocean. They were actually found high up in the mountains. A colossal deposit of microscopic fossils in the Trans-Antarctic Mountains has shown that when the ice sheet retreated 300 miles, about 4.5 million years ago, during the Pliocene era, marine fossils were pushed way up the mountains, where archaeologists started finding them in the 1980s. Think of it like this. Marine creatures died and were fossilized at the bottom of what was once an ocean. But when the Antarctic ice retreated, the sea level rose at least 75 feet. Some of these fossils were then spat onto the bases of the mountains. When the world got cold again, the fossils solidified in the ice. And as the ice grew and grew, the fossils were pushed even higher up the mountain to where they were found recently. For the first time in 4.5 million years, the temperature of the Earth is warming up to Pliocene levels. And Reed Shearer says that we could see flooding on the same scale as back then. In just a century or two, the sea could once again rise 75 feet similar to the event that pushed these marine fossils way up in the mountains in the first place. This means that millions of years from today, future archaeologists could find fossils of current marine creatures like whales and sharks high up in the mountains. Hidden Temple At the top of Mount Padang in West Java, there is a mysterious pyramid-like structure that could actually be an ancient temple previously hidden underneath the ground for thousands of years. The structure itself was discovered in the early 19th century, but scientists didn't realize that there was more to it than what they saw on the surface. At the top of the mountain, there are a few broken foundations and pieces of crumbling stone, what archaeologists originally thought was just a ruined building. But recently, archaeologists took a closer look, realizing that the real structure is actually buried underneath the ground. Archaeologists noticed that the hill wasn't shaped right, and that was when they realized they were probably standing on a buried pyramid. 
After doing tomographic x-rays of the area, they found several layers of something man-made beneath the mountain, spanning an area of at least 15 hectares. The top layer was likely a temple built around 3,500 years ago, but beneath, it's believed that whatever was built dates back at least 8,000 years ago, and it's shaped just like a pyramid. Unfortunately, scans show that the potential pyramid is about 49 feet beneath the surface. It would take a significant amount of money and resources to dig down and find the bones of the lost structure, something not currently possible. So, for the next while, we can't do anything except guess as to who built the pyramid that long ago and how it got buried under 50 feet of Earth. Thanks for watching! Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed! The Mysterious Kapilikaya Tomb High up in the hills in the Turkish countryside is a mysterious door that looks like it is carved right into the mountain. It is actually the entrance to a tomb hidden inside the mountain, cut into the rock face. Someone was definitely buried here, and they were likely very important, but archaeologists have no idea who it was or where their body disappeared to. Known as the Kapilikaya tomb, it is not actually a door, but an entire tomb carved into the shape of a cube with just a few points where it still remains connected to the rock. There is a small platform with stairs in front, but there is no easy access today. A very steep trail winds up the other side of the mountain, so it is possible if you are up for a tough climb. To reach the grave part of the tomb, you have to enter by a little opening set high up in the face of the cliff. It looks like there was once a rope that you could climb down, but it's long gone. Above the entrance to the cave, an inscription reads Ikezios, though if that's a clue to who was once here, or just graffiti by a past visitor, it's unclear. Not a lot is known about it other than it dates back to the Hellenistic period, or the 2nd century BC. Locals have reported that there is no excavation going on, and it seems like no one knows anything else about it. However, at the back of the tomb there is a broken rock from where grave robbers entered the cave space around the cube to try to get in probably in search of treasure. However, it's unknown if any treasure was ever found, since the grave part of the tomb was completely empty upon its official discovery, which nobody really knows when that was either. Whoever was there has been forgotten, and now the front of the cave tomb is covered in graffiti. Since it is close to the local town, who knows how many people just go there to hang out? Is there any spot like this near where you live? Maybe a historical place that all the locals know about but outsiders don't? Let me know in the comments below! The Mysterious Cave of Screams Deep in the jungles of Belize, there is a place known as Midnight Terror Cave, or the Cave of Screams. Some very mysterious discoveries have been found inside of this spooky cave, including 9,566 human bones and fragments and discarded human teeth. According to Michael Prout, an archaeologist with California State University, most of the bones found inside of this terrifying cave belong to children under the age of 14. This has led researchers to believe the cave was used for hundreds and hundreds of child sacrifices. What nobody knows is why exactly these children were sacrificed in the first place. The cave was used by the ancient Maya civilization, who believed underground bodies of water were sacred. Prout and his team said that the Maya were sacrificing children to Chak, one of their gods, as they believed sacrificing the young would convince the god to bring them rain. And this wasn't something that just happened sometimes. It went on for centuries, and the dating method shows that the Maya would drop one to three bodies at a time into the deepest, darkest part of the cave near an underground stream. This represents the sacred space. Another similar site can be found at Chichen Itza, where there are also many remains from human sacrifices found in the sacred well. At least half of the victims were also children. The Aztec, the Maya, the Inca, and the Chimu all did this, but why? Hagen Klaus, a professor of anthropology at George Mason University, has proposed the theory that ancient people most likely did this as an act of desperation. He says that people sacrifice that which is of most and greatest value to them. They may have seen that adult sacrifice was ineffective. Maybe there was a need for a new type of sacrificial victim. The Mummified Tree Dog In 1980, a couple of loggers stumbled upon a very strange mummy while they were working to cut down a grove of chestnut trees in southern Georgia. After slicing one of the trees in half, to their shock, they found a dog mummified inside the hollow of the tree, petrified and in a state of decay. It looked like the dog had been inside the tree for about 20 years before they found him, though at the time nobody could figure out why in the world there was a dog literally stuck inside the tree. 
the unfortunate dog was nicknamed Stucky. It wasn't until experts examined the mummified dog carcass that they concluded it was probably a hunting dog that had lived in the 1960s, and the dog had likely chased a squirrel or something similar through a small hole in the roots of the tree, but had unfortunately got itself stuck in the middle with no way up and no way down. The dog had effectively wedged itself into its final resting place, and it likely died several days later from starvation. But here's the interesting part. Rather than decaying and returning to dust, the dog was perfectly preserved inside of the tree because no other animals could reach or smell the trapped canine. Chestnut oaks also contain tannins, which is commonly used in taxidermy to treat animal pelts to preserve them. It was a combination of factors that came into play to keep this dog perfectly safe to scare future loggers. Stucky can be seen today on display at the Southern Forest World Museum, still stuck inside the hollow of the tree. Poor guy. And now for number six, but first wanted to give a big shout out to Terry Regett and John Hassel. Thanks so much for supporting this channel. Love you guys. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these. Yeti hair? In 1951, British mountaineer Eric Shipton came back from Mount Everest with a photograph he had taken of a giant's footprint in the snow. This became the origin for the Yeti, the great big abominable snowman that apparently lives in the Himalayas. Through the years, there have been a few different pieces of evidence found in relation to the supposed Yeti, but by far the most mysterious came from a 2014 study in which evolutionary biologists at the University of Buffalo analyzed samples of what was supposed to be the Yeti's hair. What they found was that the hair did in fact belong to a weird hybrid bear that was a mix between a polar bear and a brown bear. Perhaps the Yeti does indeed exist, but instead of being some sort of humanoid, it's a bizarre hybrid bear somehow living undetected in the Himalayan mountains. Nine samples of supposedly Yeti specimens were analyzed in another study after the first one, including bone, skin, hair, and teeth. These samples were collected from all over the Himalayas. They revealed no unusual findings, with all the Yeti samples coming back as the remains of either dogs or Asian black bears. Scientists are still searching for definitive proof of the Yeti, and if there truly is a weird hybrid bear living in the mountains, it has yet to be found. Pictish Anvil The Pictish people were a lost people that we know very little about. They were called the Picti, or the Painted People, by the Romans, and they were a confederation of tribes located in northern Scotland. In 2016, archaeologists found an unusual artifact on the island of Rousey, an anvil that is believed to be 1,500 years old. How does an anvil help? This ancient anvil still has sooty handprints and knee marks, and the location of where it was found helped prove that it was from the Pictish tribe. Archaeologists are amazed at the handprint because it is so personal. You can imagine the person who must have left it behind all those years ago. The anvil's find led to the discovery of a coppersmith's workshop. The site, called the Now of Swandro, also has a 5,000-year-old Neolithic tomb, Iron Age roundhouses, Pictish buildings, and a Viking settlement. Archaeologists are now racing to uncover everything they can because this place is being gradually swept out to sea, and everything they leave behind will be lost forever. Thor's Cave In the Manifold Valley in England, there is a place known as Thor's Cave. It is a natural cavern on the side of a small mountain, and apparently it's haunted. The cave was first excavated in the 1860s, revealing ancient stone artifacts probably from the Neolithic era, as well as an ancient skeleton buried in an upright position in the clay of the cave floor that may have dated back to the Bronze Age. Other skeletal remains make this cave one of the oldest inhabited sites in the district. Explorers also found the remains of a bear species that is now extinct, as well as flint artifacts and bronze brooches. Besides all of these artifacts and things, the cave gives off a strange feeling and is believed to be haunted. There have been past reports of druids using the cave for strange pagan rituals, and there is the ghost of a lone Roman soldier said to haunt the entrance. People who had to spend the night there during a thunderstorm reported hearing loud bangs and explosions coming from the rock. Air was hissing and water began to rise, forming small streams and rivers in the cave. Then suddenly, flames! There is most likely a geological explanation, but try saying that at night, in the past, when you're stuck there during a storm. Nobody knows exactly what kind of bizarre things really went on here throughout the last few thousand years, but Thor's cave continues to remain steeped in mystery, and it's not recommended to go camping in the area at night. 
Medieval skeleton rises from the grave. When a violent storm ravaged the coast of Ireland in 2018, a beech tree that had been growing for 215 years was ripped straight out of the ground. When the tree was knocked over, a mysterious skeleton was discovered tangled inside of its roots. Archaeologist Marion Dowd was called in to investigate this bizarre discovery, and what she found was that half the skeleton had been uprooted along with the tree, while the lower half of the skeleton was still stuck deep in the ground. Radiocarbon dating revealed that the young person buried beneath the tree had been between 17 and 20 when he died, sometime during the medieval period between 1030 and 1200. The young man had apparently suffered from a spinal joint disease, suggesting he had endured a lot of physical labor starting from a young age. But that's not what killed him. It looks like he had sustained several injuries from something sharp, probably a sword or a knife. Did he fight in battle, or was he murdered in cold blood? We'll probably never know the answers. The last thing that Dowd could determine was that he had been given a Christian burial, but no other bones or burial artifacts have been found in the area. And considering the tree was planted directly over the grave, chances are nobody knew the body was even there when the tree was planted over 200 years ago. There are rumors that there may be a church or a graveyard lost in the area, but no one has found anything yet. China's Hanging Coffins There are some rather mysterious coffins anchored to the side of a limestone cliff about 100 feet up the side of a cave in southwestern China. These mysterious coffins are known as the Chinese Hanging Coffins. 30 of them hang at this particular location, but there are plenty of others scattered throughout China. Wang Hao Man has been chasing hanging coffins for the last 30 years, trying to discover the truth behind these strange burials. He found his first coffins in 1985 during an expedition up the Yangtze River. They were perched about 300 feet up the side of a cliff, and nobody really knew who had left them there. But the discoveries kept coming. There have been dozens and dozens of sites found with hanging coffins, with the burial boxes being either stuffed in crevices high up on the sides of mountains or just stacked up inside of caves. The oldest hanging coffins date back about 3,000 years, and they were found in the eastern province of Fujian. Of course, the biggest mystery is why the hanging coffins were placed there and how the ancient people managed to get the coffins so high up. Experts believe that they were left behind by the Bo or the Guyue people of China. There are other cultures that have done this as well, for example in the Philippines and Indonesia. The Bo people didn't believe in burying or burning their dead, and instead placed them as high as they could so their dead could reach the heavens. But what did the heaven mean to them? It's hard to understand their burial traditions, but hanging the coffins kept the remains out of reach of scavengers and also kept the ground clear for farming. Some of the coffins were filled with funeral goods and weighed over 100 pounds. They were brought up the sides of steep cliff faces and deposited in small holes in the rock. When Wong Hao Man finally managed to excavate some of the coffins, what he discovered was shocking. The coffins were not designed to hold one body. Instead, he found bones from many different people. Perhaps families were placed together over time. Today, the tradition is no longer practiced, but these coffins can teach us a lot about the ancient people of China who disappeared thousands of years ago. Zombies in Ireland Two medieval skeletons were recently dug up in Ireland, and archaeologists are saying that they very well could have been zombies. The skeletons date back to the 8th century, and they were discovered with huge stones wedged into their mouths. According to Chris Reed from the Institute of Technology in Ireland, who worked closely with the excavation team, the skeletons were probably buried with the stones wedged in their mouth because the local people were afraid that they would rise from their graves and feast on the living, just like zombies. The zombie remains were found near Loch Key in Ireland, along with 135 other human remains. However, archaeologists believe there are at least 3,000 additional skeletons buried in the area that have yet to be discovered. The two skeletons really stood out from the rest as something referred to as deviant burials. The stones had been forced so hard into their mouths that their jaws were basically dislocated. While these burials may seem similar to the vampire burials from Europe, this happened about 700 years earlier, before vampire legends had started to spread. Instead of vampires, the Irish were apparently scared of zombies. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. The Forbidden Mountain. By 1975, the world's 20 tallest mountains had already been climbed. However, there remains one elusive summit, that of Gangkar Puensum that lies on the border between Bhutan and China. 
with an elevation of 24,836 feet. It's the highest unclimbed mountain in the world and a place steeped in mystery. For a long time, due to inaccurate maps, it was difficult to even find the mountain, let alone try to scale it. Some of the first expeditions that set off to attempt a climb to the summit couldn't even find it at all. There's also a dispute as to which country it's actually in, with China claiming a border that splits the mountain in half. Bhutan only began to allow mountaineering in 1983 because previously the country wanted to preserve the pristine condition of the mountains and protect the spiritual importance of the peaks. Local mythology says that they are the home of various spirits, but authorities eventually relented. It's hard to say no to the economic boom that tourism can bring. Four expeditions tried to conquer the mountain, but were thwarted by unexpected weather patterns and suddenly impassable terrain. Bhutan then decided to prohibit climbing above 20,000 feet in 1994, so no further attempts have been made. With reports of strange lights, magnetic anomalies, and even a yeti from those who have attempted this peak, you have to wonder whether Gangkar Puensum will ever be successfully climbed. Definitely a challenge. Megalithic Stones in the Ural Mountains The Ural Mountains in Russia have been the site of a number of mysterious finds, but perhaps none so strange as a series of megalithic stones that were found in 2014 near Shoria Mountain in southern Siberia. Some of these stones are thought to weigh as much as 4,000 tons, and they appear to have been cut with tools to give them flat surfaces and sharp corners before being stacked 130 feet high. The inhospitable conditions in the region make it very difficult to search for other similar structures and raises further questions about how they were transported and left there in the first place. The region has been inhabited by tribes for thousands of years, and it seems there's still far more to learn about ancient activity here than was previously thought. The Ararat Anomaly Mount Ararat in the east of modern-day Turkey is one of the most famous mountains in the world because of its religious significance. A photograph taken in 1949 by a U.S. Air Force reconnaissance plane made this place even more mystical. The mountain is actually a dormant volcano, consisting of two cones known as Greater Ararat and Little Ararat. Appropriate. Its highest peak reaches to 16,854 feet, and the photo in question was taken of a shoulder of Mount Ararat, about 1,300 feet from the summit. I'll let you decide whether you can see an object on the cliff face covered in snow, but there's a large group of theorists who believe it's a boat shape, about 1,000 feet long and 300 feet wide. The story of the Great Flood says that Noah's Ark found its final resting place on this mountain, and its dimensions were very similar to this. So could that be what the picture shows? Numerous further images have been taken of the region, with many being claimed to also show the structure, and some thought to have been withheld from public view because of the secrets they contain. Maybe the only way to solve this mystery is by getting to the ridge and digging for clues, something that, as far as we know, hasn't happened yet. Black Mountain Black Mountain in Queensland, Australia, stands out from the surrounding brush with its ominous-looking dark rock, but this place has long been associated with unexplained phenomenon and is feared and avoided by those who live nearby. Whether it's strange creatures, unexplained lights, or the countless people supposed to have visited but never returned, Black Mountain has it all. But is there any truth behind it? There are actually a few Black Mountains in the three square miles of the Kalkajaka National Park, each of which were formed by cooling magma that originally solidified under the Earth's crust about 250 million years ago. Not only does this give the region a foreboding look, but it also means that the rocks quickly heat up in the sun, occasionally crack in a violent manner and emit a horrific stench. So, scary noises and bad smells. Perfect location for unexplained things to happen. There's also the possibility that there are underground tunnels beneath, which are claimed to contain alien remains and artifacts, but the stories of disappearances definitely seem to be based in reality. They have been reported ever since a courier went missing in 1877, and at least 20 people are claimed to have gone missing since then. Is there something dark and dangerous hidden in the mountains, or is it simply a case of misadventure by inexperienced people getting themselves into trouble? We may never know, but make sure you're careful if you ever dare visit. Diet Law of Pass Dyatlov Pass in the northern region of Russia's Ural Mountains is the site of one of mountaineering's greatest mysteries. In January of 1959, nine college students were killed under mysterious circumstances, and to this day, no one knows what happened to them. There are several versions of this story, but here is one of them. They were attempting to reach the peak of Otorotin Mountain and set up camp in the pass. The leader of the expedition, Dyatlov, said that he'd telegrammed to his sports club when they returned, but they hadn't returned by February 20th, so a search party was sent out. 
They found the campsite, but no sign of the climbers, so the authorities were called in. They discovered that one of the tents, which still contained most of their belongings, had been cut open from the inside. They followed nine sets of footprints, seemingly made by people not wearing shoes or socks, and were led a mile away to a cedar tree. Here they found the bodies of two of the students, wearing nothing but underwear, and then they found another three who had been making their way back to the campsite. All had died from the cold, and there were no signs of other injuries. Two months later, though, four more bodies were found in a nearby ravine, and they had significant injuries. One had skull damage and two had chest fractures that could only be caused by the sorts of pressures involved in a car crash. One was also found with her tongue, eyes, and parts of her lips missing. And all four seemed to be wearing items of clothing that had been removed from the bodies that had been found earlier. With avalanches and human actions ruled out as causes, how did these climbers meet their end? The current leading theories include a Yeti, or perhaps concussive weapons tests being carried out by the military. In a country that's so secretive about these kinds of things, it's likely we'll never know the truth. Guru Dongmar Lake Guru Dongmar Lake in India is one of the highest lakes in the world and is considered sacred by Buddhists, Sikhs, and Hindus. Legend says that the place was blessed by Guru Nanak, the spiritual leader of Sikhism, while he passed by in the 15th century. At an altitude of 17,800 feet, the views of the surrounding mountains and crystal clear water are simply stunning. In the winter, the lake freezes over. That is, apart from in one place, which is where the guru is said to have touched the water. How is it possible that one small section of a lake can remain permanently unfrozen while the rest is covered in a thick sheet of ice? Locals and visitors believe this is a deeply spiritual place and a sign of the guru's powers, and no one else has yet put forward another logical explanation. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Kang Tiga Peak the Kantiga Peak is a major summit in the Nepal Himalayas that reaches as high as 22,251 feet and was first climbed in 1964. At first, it looks like every other peak in the range, but there's something that's caught the attention of UFO hunters around the world. The fact that a large portion of the mountain has been blacked out on Google Maps. The precise blacked out spots are thought to be the inaccessible Kongka La Pass and the Aksai Chin Lake both of which have long been known as potential UFO hotspots. Orbs have been seen nearby, and stories of UFOs emerging from underground locations are common. Are the blacked out areas there for a reason? Maybe to cover up UFO activity? Or is it simply a case of Google not being able to collect imagery of the region for some other reason? Take a look for yourself and see what you think. The Valley of Headless Men Nahani National Park in the Mackenzie Mountain Range of Canada is as stunning a place as you would expect from the region, but there's something mysterious about this particular area, which has become known as the Valley of Headless Men. Rather than just being a scary name, it's earned this moniker because of the number of people who have disappeared nearby and later found without their heads. The valley has long been thought to be a dark place, ever since it was first inhabited about 10,000 years ago. The Dene people spoke of terrifying creatures and the vicious Naha tribe that lived in the mountains. In 1908, two brothers in search of gold there disappeared. Rumor was that they had found what they were searching for, but soon after their bodies were discovered with no trace of their heads. The same happened to a Swiss prospector in 1917, when his charred body was found in a burned cabin, again without his head. And in 1945, a miner from Ontario was found in his sleeping bag. You get the picture. By 1969, a total of 44 people had also vanished without any trace at all, and the valley became inextricably linked with bad omens. What caused all these disappearances and deaths is still not clear, but there's definitely something scary hiding in the mountains. The Kenti Mountains The Kenti Mountains are arranged to the northeast of Mongolia and are covered by the Khan Kenti Strictly Protected Area, which is a 4,740 square mile wildlife preservation area that limits visitors, whether for tourism, hunting, or other reasons. Because of this, the region is largely unexplored, and there are many who believe the strict limitations of who can visit are because of another reason, Genghis Khan's burial site. It's thought that his tomb is somewhere around the mountain of Burkhan Khaldun, where he was said to have built a lavish palace called Ik Korig. Historians suspect that a vast necropolis was built, with all who worked on it being sacrificed to protect its location. Even the soldiers who killed the workmen were killed to ensure no details ever leaked. One source also claims that 10,000 horsemen were used to trample the ground flat and that a forest was grown on top. For 800 years, the region has been closed off to explorers, and there may be a good reason. 
Genghis Khan's tomb is thought to be protected by a curse, and any who open it could trigger events that change the world as we know it. Gyan Ganj The Himalayas is a massive and largely unexplored mountain region, and legends from India and Tibet suggest there may still be something incredible to discover. The city of Gyan Ganj, also known as the City of the Immortal Beings. It's said to be in a remote and inaccessible valley in the Himalayas, but one that has so far eluded researchers. Buddhists believe the place to be a higher dimension, one that can only be seen by yogis, sages, and worthy souls. Staying here forever is said to grant you never-ending life, and some spiritual leaders have claimed to have visited it, returning to help enlighten others. It's quite possible that ancient cities and luscious lands lay hidden beneath the snow on those mountains. Could the legend be true? Perhaps the mountains truly do inspire. Thanks for watching, and be careful when visiting the mountains. You never know what could happen. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye!